Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please find your seats if you haven't. If there's some seats up here, if you'd like to uh, come up here and find a seat. Uh, and silence all electronic devices. Our ceremony will begin shortly. As a reminder, since this is an outdoor event, the wearing of headgear and rendering proper customs and courtesies during the national anthem is required. Additionally, verbal cues will be given when it's appropriate to stand or sit. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem sung by retired Captain Cedric Williams, formerly from the North Las Vegas Fire Department, followed by an invocation by Chaplain Captain Waneri from the 99th Air Base Wing. Captain Williams. And now Chaplain Bonieri will give the invocation. I invite you all to pray with me. Our Father, on this day, 20 years ago, we remember the innocent who lost their lives, and we pay tribute to those who gave their lives so that others may live. For many of our citizens, the wounds of that morning remain fresh. Firefighters and police officers still choke up at the memory of fallen comrades. Young children and teenagers still long for their parents who will never share the joys of their youth nor guide them to adulthood. Fellow Americans take bittersweet pride in loved ones who refused to be victims and gave America our, our first victory in the war on terror. We also remember the sacrifices made by our nation's armed forces to keep us safe. Every one of our troops is a volunteer. And since the attacks of September 11th, more than 2 million Americans have stepped forward to put, our, put on our nation's uniform. Over 50,000 soldiers, sailors, airmen, and guardsmen have suffered terrible injuries, and over 6,000 have given the ultimate sacrifice in the defense of freedom. America cherishes their memory, and we pray for their families. We will never forget. Lord, out of this suffering, we resolve to honor every man and woman lost, and we seek their lasting memory in a safer and more hopeful world. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, Chaplain Oneri. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Good morning, I'm Tony Rabanza, 
the Nellis Air Force Base Fire Chief, and your narrator for today's ceremony. On behalf of Colonel Todd Dyer, the Commander, 99th Air Base Wing, welcome to today's event. This morning, we are paying tribute to our fallen first responders from the tragic events that occurred on September 11, 2001, 20 years ago. We welcome all Nellis Air Force Base leadership from the U.S. Air Force Warfare Center, the 57th Wing, 99th Air Base Wing, our community partners and representatives from the offices of U.S. Senator Cortez Mastro and Senator Jackie Rosen, as well as all other senior leaders and members of Team Nellis. Thank you for attending. Today, we commemorate the anniversary of the attacks of the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and the deadly crash of United Airlines Flight 93. September 11, 2001 changed our lives forever and became a solemn part of history we will never forget. It changed the way we think, the way we act, the way we respond. Today, we come together to remember 445 firefighters, police officers, paramedics, and medical technicians who gave their lives in the line of duty. We stand here honoring their legacy and sacrifices by the continuance of our service. As emergency responders, we have the responsibility of not only being first on scene, but also the responsibility of being first to defend freedom and justice, knowing the next call to duty may be our very last. We are confident and prepared to respond in any situation or emergency. We all come from different backgrounds and walks of life, but we stand side by side, stitched together, creating the interwoven framework that supports the weight of reliance on our capabilities to save lives and restore good order. Each of our career fields contains different traditions and heritage. However, we unite when, as one when called upon to respond. As first responders, we play a unique role for the public. We are expected to perform at the highest levels, continually sharpening our skills, and ultimately make some of the toughest decisions with very little time to think or care for our own lives. We live our lives serving others in times of need and despair. We work together to achieve the task at hand and we are at the grassroots of redefining the meaning of teamwork. Today, we honor those who have served before us, give praise to those who currently serve with us, and share our traditions to those who will take our places and serve in the future. We are first responders, and we will continue to strengthen the core of our existence and to serve humbly each and every day. We will never forget the 2,977 victims laid to rest from the initial incidents of this impactful day. And we will never cower nor step aside when faced with the risk of paying the ultimate sacrifice. We are first responders. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce our first guest speaker for today, the Command Chief Master Sergeant for the 99th Air Base Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Alex Morgan. Good morning. It really is an honor to be here with you today. Remembering the 20th anniversary of 9-11, mourning those that we lost that day, over the years, the global war on terror defined my career, my life, and many of yours. I deployed to the Middle East the first week of September 2011, and a few days later, the first plane struck the North Tower, followed by the events we remember now. 2,977 people lost their lives, including 445 first responders, and selflessly sacrificed themselves, saving countless others. They were the first casualties of the war. They answered their call to duty without hesitation. And then that call was passed on. Our military was asked to respond. To defend our nation, our institutions, 
and our way of life. I experienced the war on terror as an explosive ordnance disposal technician and weapons intelligence team leader in Iraq and Afghanistan. I spent my time with the Army, Navy, Marines, and coalition partners as a member of a combined joint task force executing counter IED operations. IEDs were often the enemy's weapon of choice and the most lethal, taking a heavy toll on our forces. Since 9-11, 7,000 service members died fighting the global war on terror. Another 56,000 were injured, often losing limbs, eyesight, or suffering invisible wounds, the full extent that we will never know. Now, we honor those that we lost that day in the following two decades. And I just want to share a memory of two Americans that gave their lives for this country. In 2010, while attached to a Marine company in Helmand Province, we executed what was planned as a 48-hour operation to clear an insurgent stronghold called Salam Bazaar. The first 12 hours went well. Our main element cleared the bazaar with no resistance. We secured the area and set up a perimeter. But within an hour, we took heavy mortar, RPG, and small arms fire, losing a gun truck and a gunner while engaging the enemy. Over the next day, we realized the surrounding roads were becoming heavily in place with improvised explosive devices or IEDs. This insurgent tactic eventually resulting in us losing 12 vehicles over the following five days. That 48 hour operation turned into an in indefinite operation. We spent the next month clearing IEDs as quickly as they were in place with our sniper team in constant engagement. Our EOD team was due to rotate out of country and I conducted a 24 hour handoff to a Marine unit and Staff Sergeant Dave Lyons. Shortly after returning to our comp, we were notified that Dave had stepped off the IED using both his legs. Another EOD team led by Gunny Sergeant Chris Eastman moving for a quick turnover before heading out to Salam Bazaar. A couple of weeks later, as we were staged at Camp Leatherneck, Waiting airlift out of country, we were notified that Chris Eastman was killed in action. Before leaving Afghanistan, we carried Chris's body to the back of the C-17. During his ramp ceremony, Dave also died of complications his injuries a couple of years later. But Chris, Dave, and the thousands of others will never be forgotten. Even as the years pass and our next generation steps forward, we will remember them. We closed the chapter on Afghanistan 11 days ago. Challenges will continue to test but not deter our resolve. Because of you, we were and will remain the world's greatest military. When asked, we will always be ready. And our nation's men and women will never die in vain. Speaker is the Deputy Fire Chief in the North Las Vegas Fire Department. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Chief Gary Stilber.
This story is probably not unique, but it's their story. I know the story because I was one of the 13 individuals. As we anxiously watch the news from our fire stations here in North Las Vegas, we hope to see at least one person pull from that rubble, whether that be a citizen that was in the buildings or a first responder that was trying to rescue them. We all felt this heavy burden for what FDNY was going through and decided to do something about it. So in true first responder fashion, one of our members, Firefighter Nino Galloway, who's here today, did some organizing and put together a team of individuals who wanted to fly across the country and work side by side next to our FDNY brothers and sisters who were exhausted physically and mentally. We took our uniforms and our turnouts so that we'd be prepared for whatever was thrown our way and whatever assignment that they may give. The first day we went arrived, we went out to ground zero. There was a ton of security in place and getting there was very difficult. We arrived to find our FEMA USAR team, NVTF-1, on the ground with several other USAR teams conducting operations alongside FDNY at ground zero. We were given a tour of the site and then told, thank you, but we don't need your assistance. The entire time was disappointed and quite devastated because as first responders, it's in your nature to want to protect and serve, problem solve, and get out there and just help your own. So after going back to Long Island where we had decided to stay at a volunteer fire department, Copeg volunteer, Copeg volunteer fire department, we were instructed by our leader, leader Nino, that instead of supporting at Ground Zero, we would be supporting FDNY by attending funerals to respect the lives of those who lost their lives that day. I cannot tell you how many funerals I attended that week, but it was at least one a day. I spent many hours sitting alongside the FDNY members who, who lost someone special, or in some cases, their entire fire station. It was a surreal moment in time for me personally to really feel the magnitude of what had just happened. I couldn't help but to put myself in their shoes and try to imagine just how I would feel if that had been my fire. Now as I stand here 20 years later, those memories are still vivid in my mind. Nearly 3,000 individuals lost their lives that day. This does not include the many first responders who work and sustain significant lung damage due to the exposure of the dust. Many of those injuries were significant enough to either end their careers and in some cases, their lives. The majority of Americans claim the attacks on 9-11 changed the way we live permanently and according to a recent poll is one of the most troubling events in recent American history. What I saw was a sense of patriotism and pride rise up in our country. We unified with the purpose to protect our country and to root out the evil that exists We threaten our way of life. Our military and law enforcement have been fighting this war on terrorism for 20 years now. And they too have lost soldiers and officers. My condolences go out to the families who lost a loved one during the attacks or the fight against terrorism over the past 20 years. Thank you and God bless America. Thank you, Chief Stover. Very pointed words. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. The men and women of today's fire, police, and medical service are confronted with a more dangerous work environment than ever before. We are forced to continually change our strategies and tactics to accomplish our tasks. Our methods may change, but our goals remain the same as they were in the past, the desire to serve, the ability to perform, and the courage to act. We do this as our chosen profession. This is one tradition of a firefighter. The fire service of today is ever-changing, but it's steeped in traditions over 200 years old. One such tradition is the sound of the bell. In the past, as firefighters began their tour of duty, it was the bell that signaled the beginning of the day's shift. Throughout the day and night, each alarm was sounded by a bell, which summoned these brave souls to fight fires and to place their lives in jeopardy for the good of their fellow citizens. And when the fire was out and the alarm had come to an end, it was the bell that signaled to all the completion of that call. 
When a firefighter died in the line of duty, paying the ultimate sacrifice, it was the mournful toll of the bell that solemnly announced the comrade's passing. We utilize these traditions as symbols which reflect honor and respect to those who have given much and who have served so well. To symbolize the devotion that these brave souls had for their duty, a special signal of three rings, three times each, represents the end of our comrades' duties and that they will be returning to quarters. And so, to those who have selflessly given their lives for the good of their fellow man, their tasks are complete. Their duties well done. To our comrades, their last alarm. They are going home. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the laying of the wreath and the playing of taps.
concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for taking the